Dear fellow Toastmasters, dear guests, hi everyone. Political correctness. What is political correctness? If I ask someone here in the audience to give me a quick answer, he or she will have a problem, I'm quite sure. But don't be afraid, I will not ask anyone. By the way, it's not possible. This is a recorded, pre-recorded speech. Talking about political correctness, that means we all know what is absolute unacceptable and we all know what is just all right. But there is a lot in between. There is a lot in between. During my research, I found out there is so much material, many aspects, many points of views, everything. There is enough material for more than three or four speeches. If we talk about political correctness, we must know there is always a difference. What does that mean? We have to know that it is always important who speaks to whom or with whom and where the conversation takes place. Who speaks with whom and where takes the conversation place. For example, women speak about men, men speak about women, Germans about Italians and they about us. Right now I would like to give a first example. There is a TV channel presenting a women tennis tournament. The presenter from the TV program, he talks about the women's skills, of course. Later on, imagine he is in a sports bar, together with friends, men only, and they watch a similar women tennis tournament. What is he speaking about then? The women t-shirt size. Later on, when he is at home and speaks with his wife about a similar women tennis tournament, he used just professional expressions. You see, sometimes we are political correct and sometimes we are just hypocritical. I have another example. It's an example from our club here, from Esprit de Corps. Some years ago, there was a speech. A young man from Russia presented a speech about Russian stereotypes. And there was some laughter in the audience when he explained that Russians do not drink so much vodka because of the alcohol, but because tap water is more expensive you see, but not all the hundreds of millions of Russians would like this joke, I'm quite sure, would laugh about. Even though, on the other hand, stand-up comedians, stand-up comedians use jokes like this every day. Let me tell you something about a kind of test I saw in a German TV program some years ago. The TV team worked with two women. Those two women were in front of a stair, downstairs, both with the same amount of luggage on their side. One friendly, the other woman friendly and very attractive. Now, one after one, asked men for help. <laughs> and 
I think you know already what happens then, you can imagine. The attractive woman got much more help from men, and more men offered help and assistance. Sure, this is second best. This is second best. And we can debate about this all day long. But this is a reality. And this be, <clears throat> will be the reality for the next thousand years. However, after all those examples and things I told you, is there any kind of conclusion? Yes, there is one. You know, we all have rigid attitudes, points of view, more or less. And in my speech, with my speech, I maybe just scratched the surface, just the surface. But even though, if we are alerted that sometimes there are more than one valid point of view, if we keep this in mind, it's a bonus for all of us. Thank you and have a nice evening.